morning everyone and welcome to this week's Kids Church. So, as you all know, we've been looking at the Old Testament. From King Saul, the very first king of the Israelite people, to the kingdom being split into two. We've looked at how the kings and the people quite often went away from God and followed false gods. We've heard how a few good kings tried to follow God. And also there were various prophets who tried to bring the people and the kings back to living in God's way and by God's rules. We then heard that the people didn't listen. And so when the Babylonian army attacked the Israelites, God let the Babylonians win. We heard particularly about four men, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who were all faithful to God in Babylon. We found out that they wouldn't eat the king's food as it had been offered to false gods. We heard how Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego had refused to bow down to a giant statue of King Nebuchadnezzar, so he put them into a fiery furnace. While they were in there, an angel joined them and they were protected. They came out not even smelling of smoke. Then last week, we heard how Daniel told King Nebuchadnezzar's son, King Belshazzar, what had been written on his wall and that it meant that Belshazzar's days were numbered and that he had not measured up to God's standards and that his kingdom would be divided up. That very night Belshazzar was killed and the kingdom was taken over by the Medes and the Persians, led by King Darius the Mede. Here is a story of Daniel and King Darius. Stories of the Bible Daniel in the Lion's Den. This is Daniel. Oh, hey! Who was a Jewish man who was taken to Babylon when he was very young. Mm -hmm. Daniel loved God and followed God's rules. He talked to God three times a day and asked God for help often. Daniel served in the Babylonian king's court for many years. Yeah, I know him and under many kings. Hey, Daniel. Daniel always proved himself to be more capable than all the other court officials. I hear a lot of things. Wow, well, time. Daniel was serving under King Darius, and because of his great abilities, the king made plans to place him in charge of the entire empire. Wow, okay. The other court officials searched for some fault in Daniel, but they couldn't find anything wrong with him. He was faithful, responsible, and completely trustworthy. Ah, wait. The court officials realized the only way to get at Daniel would be to challenge his faith. Come on! So they went to King Darius. <laughs> Excuse me, Your Majesty. And advised him to make a law that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone except King Darius will be thrown into the lion's den. I like it. King Darius signed this law, and once a Babylonian king signed a law, it could not be overruled. When Daniel learned of this law, he went home and knelt down, as he always did, to pray in his room with the windows open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he always had done, giving thanks to God and asking for his help. The officials went to Daniel's house and found him praying. Gotcha! They went to the king and reminded him of the law. I remember. Well... Then they said that Daniel had been found praying to God three times a day. What? When the king heard this, he was very upset. Get over here. And he spent the whole day trying to think of a way to save Daniel. Wait, what? By that evening, the court officials came back to the king <coughs> and reminded him that no law signed by the Babylonian king could be overruled. So at last, the king gave orders for Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den. The king said to him, May your God, who you serve faithfully, rescue you. Then the lion's den was sealed shut with Daniel inside. The king spent the night fasting and couldn't sleep. Then very early in the morning, the king hurried to the lion's den. He called out, Hey Daniel! Was your God able to rescue you from the lions? 
And Daniel answered, Long live the king! My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight. The king was overjoyed and ordered that Daniel be taken out of the lion's den. Then the king ordered the men who had schemed against Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den as punishment. Daniel was safe. There was not a scratch on him, for he trusted in God. So, because of Daniel's faithfulness to God, God had made Daniel really good at what he did. Daniel proved himself, and King Darius saw that he was the best at what he did. He split the kingdom into 120 smaller areas and had people in charge of those areas. He then put Daniel in charge of all those other people in charge. He was the boss of the bosses. These bosses got jealous of Daniel. This can happen when people see someone doing better than they are and they can then try to bring them down. Well, this is what these men tried to do. They looked for ways that they could get Daniel into trouble. But Daniel hadn't done anything wrong. So they hatched a plan to get Daniel into trouble about his faithfulness to God. Let's worship God now like Daniel did by singing, dancing and praising him. didn't realise that he was being tricked when his advisers came in and suggested that he made a law that people should only pray to him for a month. When the advisers came back and Daniel had broken the law, Darius tried to see how he could get Daniel off the punishment. He couldn't. So Daniel was placed into the lion's den. The king was worried about Daniel and hoped that Daniel's God, the one true God, would save Daniel. Well, we know that he did. An angel came in and closed the lion's mouth so that they never touched Daniel at all. A miracle. 
Now, this miracle showed the king that God was powerful and he declared that everyone should worship God. Daniel knew already that he could trust God to look after him, just as he had looked after Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the furnace. Let's worship now our mighty God with more singing and dancing. you've thought of this. When the king was looking for ways to get Daniel out of doing the punishment for breaking his law, he could have made another law. He was, after all, the king. He could have said that none of his advisers should ever be fed to lions, or that nobody whose name begins with a D should ever be punished. The king can change or make new laws whenever they want to, like he had with the praying to him law. So why hadn't he done this? Well, God didn't want him to. By putting Daniel in the lion's den, God could show his power. Not to Daniel so much, Daniel already knew about it, but to the king and to all the other people. Sometimes, when we're in a difficult position, God can use that to show other people who he is just how powerful he is and also that he will look after and protect his people. Shall we pray? Dear God, thank you for the story of Daniel. Give us the faith that Daniel had to do what was right in praying to you even though he knew he could get into trouble for it. Also, help us to trust like he did that you would protect him. We pray that people will look at us and see that you are with us and worship you because of it, God. But if they become jealous or unkind, help us to deal with that in a way that glorifies you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, that's all for this week's Kids Church. Next week, we'll look at another Bible character who remained faithful to God. But this week, remember... Some people will be against you when you follow God and they may try to plot against you. But also remember that God is faithful and he will look after you and protect you. Also remember that when we go through bad things, God might just be showing us or other people just how good and powerful he is. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>
just caught him and threw him in the lion's den. This made the king sad and hope that God will rescue him. But the law said to seal the den with Daniel trapped in. said